Hi and welcome to today's web design video blog. This week I've prepared a simple one page website to talk you through the basics of creating a responsive web page. So if you're fairly new to responsive web design, this tutorial will get you started with James's free template that utilizes nothing more than CSS, media queries and respond.js. Okay, so here's the page that I've created for this week's tutorial. And before you get started with your uh, responsive layouts, it's important to make sure if you have any sort of old habits of specifying uh, your sort of property widths with pixels, fixed pixels as opposed to percentages, you want to sort of start to switch over now as working with percentages will give you a lot more flexibility with your responsive layout. So the purpose of a responsive layout, unlike a separate mobile version of a website, is to be all things to uh, all browsers or all viewport sizes and scale itself down accordingly for those uh, different screen sizes that your users may be viewing your website on. So first of all, I've got one fixed maximum width, which will cater for all sort of desktop uh, viewers of the website. And this is kind of like a sort of fixed width, but as the site gets below 960 pixels, as the uh, sort of browser gets below that size, it starts to scale down, the page starts to respond to the uh, size of the viewport or the browser. Now I've just specified one media query which I'll so, uh, show you shortly and this is designed to kick in at a width of 400, uh, sorry, 480 pixels which is the equivalent of a smartphone device when being held in a sort of portrait uh, orientation. So you can see the media query changing the design when it kicks in just here at 480 pixels. The logo is going into the centre the horizontal navigation is going into a sort of vertical stacked block. You'll also notice uh, as we resize and rescale the page, the image is sort of downsizing quite nicely. And just down here are two columns of text stack up on top of each other. And also our little copyright statement as well goes into the middle and shrinks to just say copyright 2012. So there's quite a few different uh, sort of techniques that our media queries bringing in here changing the logo at the top, changing the way the navigation appears to make sure it's nice and usable for people's fingers when they're viewing the page on their smartphone. We have a scaling image. We're changing the uh, properties of these two columns of text and we're hiding content uh, for smartphones at this size as well. We're hiding uh, part of the text just down there. So there's nothing really too complex at all about this layout and you'll probably find, particularly if you're new to responsive layouts, that it's not as complicated or as hard to get into as you may think. So let's take a look at uh, my page. So just a simple HTML5 page with regular markup. I've got like header tags, uh, sections and footers. Uh, the real magic happens on the style sheet, but you also want to run a few things in the head of your page to ensure that your responsive layout is going to work. So first of all, you want to run the uh, viewport meta tag. It's also important to bear in mind, you can copy and paste all of this code or download the uh, project folder from our supporting blog post. Uh, if you're using uh, HTML5 markup, you're probably gonna wanna run Google's HTML5 shiv like so. Next, I'm running uh, Scott Jell's patch uh, called respond.js. And this ensures that the uh, min and max CSS3 media queries will work on IE6, 7, and 8. It's a nice little script. It's only three kilobytes minified. Uh, you can download it from GitHub. There's also a WordPress plugin available. Uh, I've provided links to both on the supporting blog post. Then we've got a link to our style sheet. And there's the uh, Google font uh, that I mentioned earlier for the, uh, for the logo on our page. And like I said, everything there below is just simple HTML markup uh, for our header, our navigation, the image, and our content uh, further down the page. So if we head over to the style sheet, uh, first 50 lines of the page is just Eric Mayer's uh, CSS uh, reset that I sort of use on uh, most sites that I'm working on. From line 50 downwards, you'll see that uh, we've just got some regular CSS2 properties here to lay out the page. I must apologize, I've uh, kind of couldn't help myself with all the styling that I've done uh, for this layout, just having a bit of a play around with this earlier on today. So hopefully you can read in between the lines to pick out uh, the key parts of the CSS that make the media query work. Um, <clears throat> on line uh, 112, 
this is how you can make your images, if you're embedding real images on the page and you want them to scale, perhaps uh, a full width image like I've done. If you embed the image as real image uh, rather than in CSS on the page and leave off the image tag, the actual uh, HTML image dimensions. <clears throat> And within CSS, specify the image width as 100%. This will keep the image proportions correct, and it will just mean that the image will fill the uh, the div or the container that it's within. <clears throat> okay, so the uh, media query happens then down here on line 145. Now I've just <coughs> excuse me, I've just set up one media query. You can obviously set up uh, as many media queries as you like to change the website's layout at various widths. Simply copy uh, this section here that's contained within these uh, brackets. Copy and paste that and just simply make as many alterations or additions of the media queries as you like to perhaps have an iPad view, maybe an iPhone uh, landscape view, as well as the 480 pixel portrait view. So you start the media query and you've got to make sure that all the CSS is contained within uh, these brackets just here. And there's just one little closing one down here at the bottom. Everything within here, it's basically saying if the viewport or the browser is 480 pixels or below, then overwrite any form of CSS with this new CSS. So when you're viewing the web page on a normal browser, uh, sorry, a normal desktop, none of this CSS is considered. It only kicks in and overwrites if you're viewing the web page on this screen size or below. So you can see here how we're changing the uh, alignment of the text like we mentioned a moment ago if you should keep an eye on the uh, responsive logo when, we, when the media query kicks in that jumps to the center and you can pretty much change this in any way you like i could perhaps make it slightly bigger so let's just change the uh, page again there you'll see that the uh, logo gets bigger for the responsive view and that's where the uh, other styles and essentially other things take effect when the media query kicks in now one thing that's worth pointing out is a lot of people in their responsive layouts, particularly when you get down to the 480 size, the uh, smartphone portrait view, tend to hide a lot of their content and really simplify the page for users. It's worth pointing out that uh, you know even though you can use CSS uh, media queries to hide content, so you see here, look, on line 181, this is how we're hiding our uh, name from the footer, just by simply displaying none. Uh, all this content still loaded in the browser so the page isn't actually any quicker at loading um, because it's displaying less content it still loads the entire page of HTML and all the CSS it just hides a lot of it from the user so it's worth bearing that in mind when creating your media queries uh, it's really as simple as that I won't waffle on anymore uh, like I said you can download or copy and paste the material from our supporting blog post uh, and have a bit of a play uh, please let us know uh, any questions comments or contributions on our supporting blog post. Thank you for watching this week's video blog. Don't forget you can find all of the code from today's video on our supporting blog post.